It's been a day marked by major news on two fronts. Republicans in the House of Representatives passed a $1.5 trillion tax package. President Trump hailed it as a big step on the way to the first overhaul of the U.S. tax system in decades. And the cascade of accusations of sexual misconduct against men in positions of power continues. Democratic Senator Al Franken of Minnesota is now the latest politician to face charges of harassment. John Yang has the story. A Los Angeles radio news anchor, Leanne Tweeden, accused Minnesota Democrat Al Franken of forcibly kissing her during a 2006 USO tour in Kuwait. He came at me, and before you even know it, I mean, you kind of get close, and he just put his hand on the back of my head, and he mashed his face against, I mean, it happened so fast, and he just mashed his, his lips against my face, and he stuck his tongue in my mouth so fast, and I said, if you ever do that to me again, I'm not going to be so nice about it the second time. And I just walked out away from him. I don't know. I, I was violated. I just felt like, you know, he betrayed my trust. Tweeden also released a photo taken during the tour of Franken looking at the camera while his hands were over her chest as she slept. Franken apologized to Tweeden in a statement saying he remembered the kissing incident differently. Of the photo, he said, I look at it now and I feel disgusted with myself. It isn't funny. It's completely inappropriate. Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell called for an ethics investigation, which Franken said he welcomed. Tweeden says she's not asking for him to leave the Senate. You know, people make mistakes. I, I mean, I'm not, I'm not calling for him to step down. Later, a second woman, Melanie Morgan, co-founder of a far-right website, Media Equalizer, said Franken harassed her after they appeared together on the show Politically Incorrect with Bill Maher in 2000. Her claims were not sexual in nature. The response on Capitol Hill? Uh, I have no idea what the right answer is. I just learned of it. Members of his own party also avoided weighing in. I think I should go vote. I cannot comment on any matter that may come before the court. In Alabama, Republican Senate candidate Roy Moore was faced with three new allegations of sexual assault and harassment, including from two teenage girls. Many of you have recognized that this is an effort by Mitch McConnell and his cronies to steal this election. They got a call and said, asked me to step down from the campaign. Well, I want to tell you who needs to step down. That's Mitch McConnell. Come on. on Capitol Hill today to talk taxes. Mr. President, Roy Moore set aside. Thank you, Mike. Roy Moore set aside. Thank you, Mike. Roy Moore set aside. Thank you, Mike. President Trump ignored questions on both Franken and Moore. For the PBS NewsHour, I'm John Yang. And late today, the Alabama Republican Party officially announced that it would stand by Judge Moore. In a statement, the party chair said, quote, Alabamians will be the ultimate jury in this election, not the media or those from afar. We'll talk to two influential members of Congress about the other lead story, a tax reform vote right after the news summary. In the day's other news, a federal judge declared a mistrial in the bribery trial of Senator Robert Menendez. Jurors said they were deadlocked on all charges against the New Jersey Democrat. After a trial that lasted two and a half months, we'll have a full report later in the program. A bipartisan group of senators has unveiled gun legislation to beef up the federal criminal background check system. It comes after a man in Texas shot to death more than two dozen people at a church. His domestic assault conviction in the military was never reported to a national database. The bill would penalize federal agencies that fail to report relevant information. In Zimbabwe, President Robert Mugabe was seen for the first time since Tuesday's apparent military coup put him under house arrest. John Ray of Independent Television News is in Zimbabwe. He reports from the capital city, Harare. The drama that will decide Zimbabwe's future glimpsed from a distance. Robert Mugabe's motorcade speeding to the presidential palace, still his if only in name. Tonight, state media released pictures of Mugabe meeting the generals who want him out. Not all carefully staged images. They suggest a deal might be close. No doubt who's in control. Just as slowly, just as surely as the army's convoys, this crisis is coming to a climax. 
Onto the stage, opposition leader Morgan Chandarai. In the interest of the people of Zimbabwe, Mr. Robert Mugabe must resign, step down immediately in line with the national sentiment and expectation. The adoring crowds that cheered Mugabe last week are gone, but he is stubborn. He wants safeguards for his wife, Grace. Her lavish lifestyle, more than anything, has angered Zimbabweans struggling in a country crumbling around them. Long weary of the greed, incompetence and corruption that has disfigured their politics, today, for the first time in a long time, Zimbabweans are daring to dream of a better tomorrow and hoping that this is not yet another false dawn. Ethel tells me she wants to be a lawyer. More likely, she'll join the long ranks of jobless. But already, the family speaks with a freedom they haven't known for years. We are sick and tired of Mugabe. They must remove him for us to be better. If Robert Mugabe goes, what will that mean for you? Wow. To him, that would be a great blow, but to us, that would be a great change. At least we have, we will have our Zimbabwe bake. It was at the airport that Mugabe was last seen in public, renaming it in his own honour. His exit from power, if not the country, is surely close at hand. That report from John Ray of Independent Television News. China today renewed its call for North Korea to halt nuclear and missile testing if the U.S. halts military exercises with South Korea. It is called the Freeze for Freeze initiative, and Beijing said it is the most reasonable way forward. Just yesterday, President Trump said that China's President Xi had agreed the proposal is a non-starter. A painting of Christ by Leonardo da Vinci has shattered the record for the most expensive piece of art ever sold. It was auctioned for $450 million last night at Christie's in New York. The work is titled Salvator Mundi, or Savior of the World, and depicts Christ holding an orb. It dates to around 1500. The winning bidder remains anonymous. And on Wall Street, stocks surged on strong corporate earnings from Walmart and Cisco Systems. The Dow Jones Industrial Average gained 187 points to close at 23,458. The Nasdaq hit a record high, rising 87 points, and the S&P 500 added 21.